it says two long straight wires are parallel and 29 centimeter apart. Uh, let me actually make this a little bit smaller. I need some space to draw things and uh, yeah, I think I'll be fine. Um, I can draw it this way. So I have two long parallel, uh, two long straight wires. Let me draw them horizontally. Okay, so two wires carrying the same current I in the same direction. It asks, what is the magnetic force per meter exerted on each wire? And I hope you have this sense that um, because magnetic force obeys Newton's third law, that when A pushes on B with some force, B also pushes on A with an equal and opposite force, that you only really have to do calculation for one side. And in terms of magnitude, it'll be the same magnitude on the other side. The reaction force will be the same. So we'll just do, do that one side of the calculation. Let me ca try to calculate the force on A by B. So when you are setting up calculation that way, each wire has a role. The wire B will be the will play the role of the source of magnetic field. So I first calculate what is the what, what are the values of magnetic field at this point near A due to B? And this is where you kind of have to, um, so it, it's nice if you have uh, formulas memorized. Um, and you know, if not, then you can derive it using Ampere's law. It's pretty quick to do. But let me say that I have this formula memorized. Magnetic field due to a long line of current is given by this. Um, let me try to remember two times k over c squared current of the magnetic field producing thing divided by the distance r. So, uh, or you know, if, if you are using the permeability, then uh, with that other coefficient, it'll be mu naught over two pi times i over r. Um, th there's quite a bit of similarity between this and the electric field formulas. That's kind of how I remember them. Um, now the direction is quite different, you know, with the electric fields, they radially point away, but with the magnetic fields, they kind of uh, wrap in circles that's tangent to the uh, current. So, or, you know, circles that's wrapping around the current. So I'm going to use uh, one of the shortcut right-hand rules where I point my thumb in the direction of current, then the way my fingers curl is the sense in which those circular magnetic fields go. So at the top, the magnetic field will be pointing out of screen. So we have a magnetic field pointing out of screen uh, along the position of wire A. Um, so these are magnetic fields, B field, due to wire B, oh, terrible lettering. <laughs> um, so, okay. Now, and this is perpendicular to the current, good. That'll simplify our calculations. Now, in terms of uh, force on a wire, um, so for force due to magnetic field on a current carrying wire takes this form, uh, current times the length, cross product with the magnetic field, I think. Yeah, <laughs> cross product with the magnetic field. And um, if we put in the length here, it, it, the right-hand side will be infinite because length is infinite. That's why it's asking, what is the magnetic force per meter? So, um, so when we have this whole quantity, we'll divide up by one over L so that on the left-hand side, we have force per length. And on the right-hand side, hopefully we'll have something that's, uh, um, that's finite, not infinite. So uh, let me just uh, work through this quantity here. So L cross B, so, uh, oh, I need to work through the direction. So the, the direction of IL, it goes in the direction of the current. And uh, so IL cross B, I need to orient my hand so that my fingers curl in the direction uh, out of screen. 
So my magnetic field uh, points downward. So the force, mag magnetic force uh, points downward. Once I figure out the direction, then let me just figure out the magnitude. They are perpendicular. So the magnitude will simply be um, LB. So it's going to be ILB divided by L. Good. Length is cancel out. So the force per meter here will simply be um, current times the magnetic field, which will be this. Um, so uh, let me actually work out that expression. So plugging in this expression or, or plugging in this expression for the magnetic field, I see that I get this uh, current squared. I got two factors times uh, two times Coulomb constant divided by c squared and r was given here. I'm going to use this for c squared r. Okay, let me plug in the numbers. I think I'm just going to do this in Wolfram Alpha because that'll be simpler. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't have to look up the constant. I can just let Wolfram Alpha do all the uh, numbers. So just make it so that I can see everything here. The current, uh, 60 ampere squared times 2 times a Coulomb constant divided by speed of light squared times the distance, uh, 29 centimeter. Hopefully, they'll interpret that input correctly. Yeah, current squared to Coulomb constant C squared. Okay, that looks right. And I hope. Oh, right. It's not going to give me newtons. It's going to be newton per meter. So kilogram per second. I think that is a newton per meter. Um, yeah, because uh, newton will have a meter per second squared. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, 0 0.00248 um, newton per meter. 0 0.00248 newton per meter. Now, when you look at the direction of force that I figured out, you will see that this direction pulls the this current carrying wire towards wire B. And if you do similar analysis for magnetic force from A on B, what you will find is that that force will also uh, pull it towards the other wire. So this is an attractive force, which um, I don't know. The first time I saw it, I thought it was maybe a little bit counterintuitive because uh, we are used to saying, you know, likes repel and opposites attract. And here, if you are looking at these current carrying wires as like uh, two likes, two currents going in the same direction, uh, it turns out they attract, they, they don't repel. I mean, you know, aphorisms go only so far. Um, here, the the kind of force that you have, it pulls the wires together. Uh, what is the magnitude and direction of the force per unit if the current flow in opposite directions? Um, I hope you can kind of uh, think through this without having to rework everything in detail from scratch. Uh, which is that, okay, so imagine reversing directions of current. Then, um, so, you know, I could keep A the same and just reverse the direction of current in B. Then what it'll change is it'll change the direction of the magnetic field so that the magnetic field now points into the page. Then um, the direction of force here will change the direction so that it's now, it's now, um, uh, upward. So two currents are flowing in opposite directions will repel, first of all. And in terms of the magnitudes, nothing relating to the magnitudes have to change. So magnitude will remain the same. So having talked through all that, I'll just enter it without reworking out all the answers. It pushes the out wires up. So, yeah. And by the way, this kind of force is a source of uh, uh, a self force for like a loop of wire or like a solenoid. When you have a loop of a, a current in a solenoid, then the kind of the pressure that's on the solenoid is to, um, I think it's to 
squish the uh, loops together. So, uh, so like uh, if you are designing a superconducting magnet um, that's basically a solenoid that carries a lot of current, then you have to think through that kind of uh, tension that could arise from the magnetic force.